to escape briefly the darkness with some incredible engineering work. Uh, XAI just released Grok AI Assistant mm -hmm. that I've gotten a chance to play with. It's, uh, it's amazing on many levels. First of all, it's amazing that a relatively small team in a relatively short amount of time was able to develop this close to state-of-the-art system. Uh, another uh, incredible thing is there's a regular mode and there's a fun mode. Yeah, I guess I'm to blame for that one. <laughs> <laughs> I wish, it, first of all, I wish everything <laughs> in life had a fun mode. Yeah. I, there's something compelling beyond just fun about the fun mode yeah. interacting with a large language model. I'm not sure exactly what it is because I've only had a little bit of time to play with it, but it just makes it more interesting, more vibrant to interact with the system. Yeah. Uh, absolutely. I, um, our, our, <laughs> our AI Grok is modeled after the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, mm -hmm. uh, which is uh, one of my favorite books, uh, which is, it's a book on philosophy disguised as a book on humor. Mm -hmm. um, and um, I would say that is that forms the basis of my philosophy, uh, which is that we don't know the meaning of life but the more we can expand the scope and scale of consciousness, digital and biological, the more we're able to understand what questions to ask about the answer that is the universe. So I have a philosophy of curiosity. There is generally a feeling like this AI system has an outward looking, like the way you are like sitting with a good friend, looking up at the stars, like the, the asking podhead like questions about the universe, wondering what it's all about, the curiosity that you talk about. There, there's a sense, no matter how mundane the question I ask it, there's, there's a sense of cosmic grandeur to the whole thing. Well, we, we are actually working hard to have uh, engineering, math, and physics answers that you can count on. Mm -hmm. um, so for the other sort of AIs out there that, what is, these so-called large language models. Um, I've not found the uh, engineering to be reliable. Um, and it, it, the hallucination, it, it unfortunately hallucinates mo most when you least want it to hallucinate. Yeah. <laughs> so when you ask important, diff difficult questions, it, that's when it tends to be confidently wrong. Um, so we're really tr trying hard to say, okay, how do we be as grounded as possible so you can count on the results? Um, trace things back to physics first principles, uh, mathematical logic. Um, so underlying the humor is an aspiration to ad adhere to the truth of the universe as closely as possible. That's really tricky. It is tricky. So that's why, you know, you, you, there's always gonna be some amount of error, but we wanna um, aspire to be as, truthful as possible about the answers uh, with acknowledged error. Um, so that there was always, you don't wanna be confidently wrong. So you're not, not gonna be right every time, but you don't want to be, you wanna minimize how often you're confidently uh, wrong. And then like I said, once you can count on the logic as being um, not violating physics, then you can start to, to build on that to create uh, inventions, like invent new technologies. But if if you can't if if you if you cannot count on the foundational physics being correct, obviously the inventions are simply wishful thinking, you know, imagination land, magic, basically.